another day, another dollar. Thank the Lord for another 24. God, I knew that was you. Just getting back to the crib from the gym chest day to day. You know, I got some bench press in with the chains on there, man. Great for increasing your bench press. If you're looking to increase your bench press, getting right into the video, correctional officer video. I've gotten a few questions from people on my previous videos. They were asking me, what's the best type of prison to work at? What's the best institution for them to uh, try to become a correctional officer at? So I'm gonna give my whole take, my opinion on the subject. Honestly, any prison you go to in the world, whether it's a, a camp, a women's prison, a county jail, a state prison, a federal prison, a high security, maximum custody, uh, penitentiary, they're going to have their fair shares of ups and downs. You know, every prison has its problems, whether it's a women's prison, you know, you deal with uh, male staff, COs sleeping with the female inmates. Uh, you deal with female officers sleeping with the male inmates at men's prisons. Uh, anything can go down in any prison, you know, don't, don't get so tripped up, you know, and trying to find the best prison. When I applied for the feds, you know, I worked my first institution in West Virginia. Then I put in my transfer to come down here to Butner, the federal prison in North Carolina. You know, I was doing my research. I'm online and I'm coming across all these articles about how, you know, Butner is, you know, the best prison, one of the best prisons in the BOP, this and that. But since I've been here at this prison since 2015, man, there is... We've had probably, let me see, we had like three homicides since I've been here. Uh, we've had numerous inmate suicides. Uh, so many staff members get walked out for being dirty, corrupt, you know, bringing in contraband to the inmates. We had one uh, CO, he was uh, forcing a transgender inmate uh, to perform sexual acts on him, you know, on the unit at the prison, you know, so... Any prison, like I said, is going to have its problems, you know, whether you go to the county jail, you go into a state prison, a detention center, a federal prison, maximum security versus minimum security. You're going to see a little bit of everything. You know, when I go into work, I go into it not expect, not knowing what I'm going to get into, what's going to be on my hands for that particular ship. You know, you have to go into it and expecting anything to happen. You know, I, Like I said, I've seen so many different things you know, and I've worked at a county jail. I started at a medium. I started at a medium security prison when I worked uh, for the feds. I started, then I came down here to Butner. Like I said, Butner is unique in itself that we have four different institutions within that complex. You know, you got uh, two medium security prisons. You have a low security prison. Then you have a medical center where I'm at, and the medical center is kind of like it's a medical center, but it's like a county jail at the same time. You have all different classifications of inmates you know you got you may have a maximum custody inmate he's supposed to be at a high security penitentiary but he's at the medical center because he has to get medical treatment you know me personally though i feel you know as far as me working at a county jail and then working at a prison i honestly like working at the prison better just because you have, there's less, there's less work, I feel like, in my opinion, you know, when I work the county jail, you have to push the food carts down to the unit, you know, you have to actually pass out the trays to the inmates, you know, you have, there's more hands-on stuff, you know, versus me, where when I work in the prison, you, when they call my unit the child, they go down to the child hall and eat, all I have to do is unlock the door and stand there and watch them as they walk down to the child hall and come back and get their trays, but don't get it twisted, though, you have instances where the prison may be on lockdown. Then we have to feed manually. We have to get the food carts on the unit and feed the inmates in their cells. You know, the, the institution may be on a lockdown because a big fight happened. An uh, inmate got stabbed. A staff member got assaulted. The warden decides they want to lock the institution down for two weeks. You know, COVID. When COVID hit, I was working at the federal prison. We were locked down probably for like nine, nine to 12 months. They would come out certain times of the day for like an hour or two, they would come out a little bit at a time, but we had to feed them on the units, you know, for that whole entire period. So, you know, there's so many different factors that goes into, you know, what the, what prison or institution you want to work at, you know, so you can't really say one institution is better than another, you know, and it's all up to your preference. You know, you may want to go 
to an institution where there's a lot of action. You know, you go to a high security penitentiary versus a low security prison, you know, you're going to see a lot more action. You're going to see a lot more fights. You know, you got active gang yards, a certain prison. If it's a high security prison, man, it's an active gang yard. You got a lot of politics. You have a lot of gangs, you know, so there's the more potential for things to pop off. You know, like a race ride on the rec yard. You got the Mexicans versus the whites, the whites versus the blacks, you know. There's more potential propensity for violence at those institutions. But don't get it twisted. Like I say, you cannot get it twisted, man. You cannot just go into it thinking that, oh, I'm going to a low security prison. Nothing happens here, man. The low security prison I work at, you know, I do overtime over at the low security prison. You know, we have the ability where I'm at to go to other institutions. You know, you don't just have to stay at your institution, you know, you, I can go. So for instance, like I said, I work at the medical center. I can sign up for overtime at the other three institutions. I've been, you know, I go to the low security. They've had uh, their fair share of numerous problems as well. You know, they done had, they done been on lockdown. They're to have fights, uh, medical emergencies, man. Uh, a big problem with contraband, cell phones getting in to the prison, people throwing the contraband over the fence. They, they had a big problem with, uh, last year, you know, with a lot of cell phones was running around at that low security prison, you know, the camp, the inmates are out and about at the camp. You know, if you work at a camp, a lot of times the inmates, their, their custody level is minimal. So some of those dudes that's locked up, they may be in prison and they're at the camp, but some of them dudes, they have jobs where they go out into the public and they have jobs, you know, a big problem that's at camps. Uh, a lot of contraband. It's a lot of contraband that flows into the camps just because you got to look at the nature of a camp. It doesn't have a fence around it. And the inmates at the camp, most of them have jobs around the prison. They may be in charge of, you know, the landscape crew. They may be on the landscape crew where they go out and they cut the grass around the prison. They may work at the warehouse, you know, so it's so easy for the inmates at the camp to get contraband. You know, we, when we do a mass shakedown, at the camp, it's, it's nothing to go into there and shake it down. And you probably find 20, 30 cell phones, all kinds of cigarettes, uh, vape pens, uh, pro. They they get all kinds of crazy shit at the camp. Protein, uh, alcohol, they having vodka. They got the shit you get on the street, man. But you have, like I said, you got to understand the camp. When it doesn't have a fence around it, the inmates can just move around. Somebody, anybody could just walk up on the wood lines behind the camp, you know, and throw a package into the uh, the woods and they cooperate, you know, with the inmate, the family member, whoever it is, they tell the inmate, yeah, I, I, dropped the, uh, I dropped the pack off in the back of the woods. And they wait, you know, to like the CO, he may not be around. They run out there, grab the package and bring it back in. It's that easy, you know. That can happen at a high security prison too. Now, I've, I've, I read a story one time where an inmate actually escaped from a U.S. penitentiary, you know, these, like I said, these are high security institutions. They not only have a fence around the prison that uh, if somebody was to jump on the fence, it'll shock you. You know, they got shock fences at the high security prison and they have a uh, probably like a 12 foot uh, concrete wall all around the prison. You know, I seen there was a story where a dude, he escaped from a USP. I think it was USP Big Sandy. He uh, managed to hide in a, uh, a big basket in the mail truck. He hid in that and he rolled out the back gate in the prison, you know? So like I said, man, you you just have to factor in all the different things, you know, do you want to stay in your city? The prison that, the prison or jail that you may be trying to get on at, they may not hire as much, you know? It may be a little longer wait. Do you want to wait and stay home or are you willing to be mobile? You know, if you're if you're willing to be mobile, with this, uh, trying to become a correction officer, you can get on a, at a prison in like two to two to six months. You can get on fast, you know. When I started and I applied for the feds, and it was a, this was an institution that was actively hired. They needed uh, officers bad where I was applying at. It still took me like five or six months to get on, you know. So if you're trying to get on at a prison, right, and you know, you, you've been calling on, you've been, had your application in for a year or two. 
you know, they, they say they're not really hiring. At some point, they're going to be hiring, you know. So you have to decide whether you want to uh, play the waiting game or if you're willing to be mobile, pick up, pack your stuff up, and go somewhere else. I made a previous video talking about that. If you was trying to get on fast as a correction officer, man, you know, you're willing to be mobile, you can get on quick. That especially works. That works great, you know, for people that's young. You young, you single, you know, you in high school, you about to graduate, you fresh out of college, you don't really have any ties, you know, to where you're at and you're willing to be mobile. If you're willing to be mobile, the sky's the limit, man. I've seen people, you know, they come in as an officer, they keep transferring within the Bureau of Prisons. They go to the institution, you know, they may start, let's say they start here at Butner as an officer. They transfer way out to a federal prison in California. They stay there for a year, they get another job promotion. They may go, let's say they go all the way down to Texas at a federal prison, and they stay there for a year. I've seen people go from officers to being a warden in like 10 years, you know? If you're willing to be mobile, you know, the sky's the limit, man. You could you could be all you could be, in the, especially in the Bureau of Prisons, because the thing with the Bureau of Prisons, you know, the federal prison system, once you get in, you could transfer to any prison in the United States. And they got a prison, a federal prison in uh, Hawaii. Uh, they got one in Puerto Rico, too. So there's damn near a federal prison just about any state, you know. So breaking it down, like I said, you have to weigh, you have to weigh all the different factors in, you know. Do I want to work at a county jail, you know, or a high security penitentiary versus going to a low security institution where may a lot a lot of stuff may not happen as much but once once you get in there you'll start to see at these spots where a lot of stuff doesn't happen you have a lot more problem amongst your coworkers it's not when you at spots where a lot doesn't go on you know you don't got a lot of activity as far as fights staff assaults inmates getting stabbed you know there's a lot of idle time so that that type of environment can create a situation where there's a lot of workplace drama between co-workers you know you got a lot of gossip you got a lot of rumor mills you know it's just a lot of pettiness shit like that that happens everywhere don't get me wrong but it may be more prevalent if you go to a low security institution where not it's not a lot going on you know what i'm saying versus a high security institution you go there you don't have time if you're going to like a u.s penitentiary you don't have time for like a lot of the shenanigans when it comes to workplace drama amongst your coworkers because there's so much shit going on. You may, you go in there, man, it may be like a goddamn race riot can break off, man. Now you got to lock the whole prison down for like two, three weeks. It may get stabbed and killed. He get punched in the neck. Boom, boom, three, ten times, get killed. Now the, uh, the institution's locked down. Staff member, CO on the unit, he getting assaulted by the inmates. They, they pull them knives out, man. They pulling them big, them bang, the big bangers out trying to put it in through the vest, man, T take the CO out. Now the institution locked down for three months, man. You know, you don't have time for shit like that. The shenanigans when you got that, because there's so much going on. Y'all got to stick together. You know, you got so much bull, like uh, amongst the inmates, man. It's a lot of politics. If you go into a high security prison, you know, you go into a county jail, you're going to see a lot of different things as well. You're going to deal with people coming in off the street high off of drugs. Um, you got people in county jails that don't, they never really been to prison or, or jail, so they don't know how to act. So it's a lot more prevalent uh, to see fights and stuff. You'll deal with uh, different custody levels. You may have, you may have one dude in there. He didn't got uh, convicted for first degree murder. And he's just waiting to go to prison to do his life sentence. Or you may just have your uh, typical college student that had got a DUI over the weekend clubbing. You know, they, they may be in the holding tank to uh, Monday. You know, they got a DUI. So it's all different classification levels when you're working at a county jail. Like I said, where I'm at, uh, the medical center, that runs like a county jail as well. Like I said, you got all kind of different cu uh, custody levels in there. You got like max custody inmates that's there. They're just there for medical treatment. They're not supposed to be there, right? They're supposed to be at a max, max security, but there's only so many medical centers for the federal prison system in the U.S. 
and they have to come there and get their treatment. They may have to come there for cancer treatment, get their chemotherapy. They may have to come there to get dialysis. You know, when we walk in these inmates to the uh, the treatment, you know, where they get their treatment at, it's like three officers. They in handcuffs, restraints, shackles, you know, and an officer may have to sit there the whole time with them. It's so, it's so unique. You know, you may have, you got, we got mental health inmates. That's a, a big thing in prison systems. You know, mental health inmates are unpredictable. They may, they may snap at any moment. You don't know when they're going to snap. They may stop taking their meds and just start doing crazy, bizarre shit. I've seen that work in the mental health units. You know, you may have uh, people that are on protective custody. You know, when you have people on protective custody because they got like child sex trafficking charges, uh, crimes against children, sex acts, stuff like that, they have to be separated from general population. I've probably seen this or read about this or heard about this in movies or online, you know, certain charges, they may call them a child molester or chomo, stuff like that. They can't co-mingle with the general population. You know, if you had a regular prison, you know, those dudes, they can't be around the other inmates just because of their charges, you know. If the other inmates find out about their charges, you best believe something's going to happen, you know. Whether they may be like, they may come to the office and be like, yo, CEO, this inmate right here, man, he, uh, I don't know what you're going to do, but he can't be on this unit. He, you got to, he going to have to go up top, you know, and there's been instances like that, man. While I remember I worked at the county jail, right? And there was a dude on the regular unit, but he had child molestation charge. He was molesting children or molesting somebody, a child underage. The inmates on the unit didn't know that he, he thought he was just going to be able to, you know, uh, slide through the cracks under the radar and they didn't know that, right? And they had the TV in the unit, right? So they watching, you know, it was a big thing when I worked the county jail for the inmates. They would uh, watch in the evening and see, you know, they would play on the news, like who got charged with what, who uh, went to jail for this and that. And his charges popped up on the TV, you know. I was working up in the tower on that unit. And next thing I know, he hit the button on the uh, door to the unit, that that, that, uh, that alerts the CO up in the tower that an inmate needs something. And he came on the box, the speaker box. He was like, yo, CO, I can't stay in here. I got to get out of here. Can you tell the CO to come get me? So I, I was like, yeah, hold on. I walked over there and I looked in the unit, you know, and he was already standing by the door. He had all his stuff packed up, his property packed up, standing by the door. So I had to get on the walkie-talkie and call the CO and like, yo, go in there and get this dude. Man, I think he's checking in. You know, so you would deal with stuff like that, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, every prison, it has its own unique structure, how it operates. It has its ups and downs. You know, you just kind of got to go into it and uh, see how, see how it is for you. You know, you can read online about how prison is so great. It's one of the best prisons, man, to work at if you a CO and you can get in there and you totally not like it, man. The work morale may be low. Uh, it's just a lot of a lot of drama, a lot of bullshit, and you may decide that you want to transfer. You know, there's so many factors, so I can't really say, you know, one one institution is the best type of prison to work at. You know, and it's like up to your personal preference. You may want to go to a prison or somewhere where it's rocking and rolling. When I say rocking and rolling, like I said, you got all kind of action activity. You got a lot of gang activity. You got a lot of fights going on, a lot of stabbing. You like stuff like that, so you may want to go to that type of uh, prison. You may want to go to a low security prison. You may want to go to a women's prison. You may want to go to the county jail. You may want to stay in your hometown, you know, and work there versus trying to travel and be mobile and go to another state or another agency that's outside of your state uh, to try to get on faster. You may just want to play the waiting game. So there's so many factors that goes into it, you know, so I can't really say what's the best prison. You know, if you want to get into it, you know, at the end of the day, apply, 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 you know, and just see how you like it. You know, if it's not for you, cool. You know, working in corrections is not for everybody. You know, you got it. It takes a special person, you know, to be a correctional worker, to be a correctional officer, to be a correctional staff in these institutions because of the crazy shit that you'll see, you know. And I like I said, I've been doing this 13 years. I've seen so much crazy shit in my career. I've seen, I found an inmate that hung himself and killed himself. He was dead. You know, I've seen inmates get stabbed. I've seen uh, inmates jump over the top tier. Man, I seen a dude 
he was getting out. He was only in there for a misdemeanor charge, right? He, the judge was going to let him out that same day. He jumped over the top tier. You know, in a, a housing unit and a prison, usually it's two stories. You know, you go up the steps to the, uh, the, the top tier. He jumped over the top tier, broke both of his legs. He was getting out of jail the same day, you know? I've seen uh, mental health inmate, man, covered from head to toe. He took his own feces out the toilet and he wiped all his shit on him. He was covered from head to toe and shit. There's so many uh, bizarre stories I have, you know, the shit's insane, you know, and you will start to question, you know, am I, am I all right in the head? I keep coming back, you know, doing this shit every day, you know, coming in, doing my shifts, and once you see the shit. But after a while, I feel like me personally, after a while, you just get used to seeing shit, you know, you deal with it, and you keep it moving, you know, after, after you've been doing it long enough. I've, like, I've been 13 years in, I've been at three different facilities, I've seen, I've, I, I would say knock on wood, I've seen it all, but it never ceases to amaze me when I see something new. I'm like, wow, they really did that? Or that shit really happened at the prison I work at, you know? So, you know, you did, if you're interested in the job, just go ahead and apply for it. You know, I'll help you out to the best of my ability. That's why I'm doing these videos to help people that are interested in working in correction. You know, I'm just trying to give y'all the spill, you know, give y'all my perspective on how the job is, give y'all as much tips, you know, and uh, possible advice that'll help you out in your career, you know, whether it be the hiring process, dealing with inmates, you know, uh, the different work schedules, you know, having to work weekends and holidays, what's the pay like, what's the retirement like, you know, how to have longevity in your career. Y'all like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel, At The Ghetto Bodybuilder. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, at the Ghetto Body Butter. I got the gym merch. I got the merchandise for sale. This one of my shirts right here. It ain't for everybody. What I say just a second ago, working in corrections, it ain't for everybody, man. You know, so like I said, man, y'all got any comments, uh, ideas, or topics for future videos y'all may want me to talk about? Drop a comment in the comment box, man. I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Y'all know how we coming. Let's get motivated.